we now have our three fundamental cosmological equations, the Friedman equation, the fluid equation, and the acceleration equation. But they also contain three unknowns. We don't know A of T, E of T, or P of T. All of those things are potentially complicated. And so the final thing that we need to be able to go through and solve this is actually quite straightforward. It's to go to an equation of state. And an equation of state links the pressure with the energy density. And in cosmology, we do a simple version. So if you have equations of state in astrophysics in general or in physics in general, you can have very complicated equations of state. In cosmology, we make a very simple statement. We say P equals W E. And so this is the equation of state parameter. And it's just a number, ultimately. So they mention this number. Uh, but you can think a little bit about it, right? Imagine an ideal gas. This may not look entirely familiar, but in an ideal gas, you can write the pressure is equal to density divided by the mean molecular mass times kT, where this is the Boltzmann constant. This is the temperature. So in other words, you have a gas, the pressure it exerts is just proportional to the temperature and the density. So that's what an ideal gas law looks like. And then for a relativistic scenario, so go to rel you know, a slightly relativistic version. So your energy density is rho C squared. Then that just becomes P equals kT over mu c squared e. And another relation, you probably don't know it off the top of your head, but it exists for an ideal gas, is that you can link the temperature with the velocity, the root mean velocity, if you like, of the material. So that three kT, because you have three degrees of freedom in a gas, right, it can go x, y, z, is just mu v squared, where this v squared in brackets is basically a root mean velocity. So each particle, of course, has a separate velocity. They're all whizzing around at different velocities, but this is a sort of average velocity that you're measuring. So in this case, p is just essentially v squared over 3c squared times epsilon. And you can view this, therefore, as being w, oops, w, which is your equation of state parameter. And then you can look at some examples. So, what about for a universe which consists of relativistic particles? Neutrinos, or even photons, for that matter, which move at the speed of light. So if V is of order C, then P equals one third E, and W equals one third. Not about non-relativistic particles. Well, here V is much, much less than C. So P equals zero. Basically, V over C is almost zero. Um, and they're the two obvious things you see. Well, we would talk about this as being radiation or a radiation-dominated universe. And we would talk about this one 
as being matter or a matter dominated universe. But there are some other interesting features that you can see as well, right? You can write an equation of state parameter. You can write any number you like. It doesn't mean it's physical. Um, but, for example, if I look at the acceleration equation, so I go back up here and I look at this E plus 3P. So if I have a situation where I have E plus 3P being positive, the energy density and the pressure are positive, then the acceleration will be negative. The universe will be slowing down. If I can make this 3p term itself positive, then I can in fact get the universe, sorry, negative, the 3p term negative, not positive. If I can make the 3p term negative, then I can make a universe that accelerates. So if, if for example, w is less than minus one third, then E plus 3P is negative. And the universe will accelerate. And you might say, well, can I get W less than one third? Does that make any sense at all? Well, not necessarily. Um, but a pressure, you know, a negative pressure is not like a negative energy density. You can have a negative pressure because negative pressure is a tension. It's something that pulls something apart. So you can have potentially physically allowed negative energy densities. And as a particular example, which is called the cosmological constant, and that has W equals minus one. We sometimes write this as a lambda dominated universe. And so these are your, your options essentially for the way that you link the pressure and the energy density. And that's very useful because if I then look, uh, at, for example, back at the fluid equation, I can now get the fluid equation and I can get rid of the pressure. Or I can take the acceleration equation And I can get rid of the pressure. And so I can remove uncertainty in the pressure from the fluid and acceleration equations. And that is what I need to solve the Friedman equation. And solving the Friedman equation is essentially the task for next week.